Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 8 of What If Naruto Became the Shadow of Kanoha. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends and show me the platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode over on Anime King 3 of What If Naruto. Have the ultimate nature bloodline and enjoy that guys. And also, over in Anime King 2 I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto became the next avatar. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys. And remember for new this is the first time you hear my voice. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. And thank you for all for your help and your support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new I'll be replying talking about all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last time we left off, Naruto woke up to a dead girl on top of him. She had tried to invade his mind, and the fox had made sure that she paid for that with her life. As Naruto told the fox that they wouldn't be any more casualties, the fox simply laughed his words off like they were nothing. As Naruto made his way towards the weapon maker, as he was able to get the sword done, as Naruto made a detour towards the sand, things were not so good at the sand. As Gar was currently doing a fast for his people, because food and supplies were slim right now. As Tamar told him they need to eat, they need him in this time of panic. As Naruto saw how the people were acting with each other, things were bad, really, really bad. As Naruto told Gar that he could do something about it, and that night they turned the thief. Two of the most powerful men in the world made their way as they went towards another fat, rich merchants at the land of river who was raising their prices because they knew that their goods were desired. As they were able to bring a few food back toward the sand. As Naruto clones had brought back some as well, it was a lot, enough to spare them for this time. But it wouldn't last, as Gara thanked Naruto though. Temari also told Shikamaru the big news. The reason why she was getting woozy lately, she was pregnant. As Shikamaru was happy to hear that, Gar was happy to hear that as well. As it made Naruto smile even though, he knew that his life, well, things wouldn't be that good for him. Gar told him that he could not let the fox control him. But that was easier said than done. As Naruto came home as he saw, Tomo was there. Tomo said that he wasn't leaving, he was just, well, it was just becoming too much. As Naruto told him about the Nine Tails fox and everything, Tomo was young, he didn't really know, as Tomo was shocked to know that about Naruto. So Naruto could not stop being a shinobi, more or less he was a weapon for the village, as Tomo was angry to hear that. After all, it wasn't his choice and he didn't like that one bit, but he told Naruto that they were brothers now, and it was like he was going to leave anytime soon, as Naruto was happy to hear that. Some time passed as Naruto was training, as he was put on a team to go on a mission at the moment. They met up with a root Anvo member. They were going after a third generation swordsman, as they were able to formulate with the Kira team because of Naruto talking to them. With Kojo and the others, they faced off against the third, the year 70 the swordsman. As Naruto was able to complete the Putamoto of commotion, the boy had betrayed them, the root member, but Naruto had talked to him. His purpose was with Danzo, but now that Danzo was gone, it, he didn't know what to do. But Naruto did something that surprised him. Naruto took off his mask and showed him his real face. As he was surprised to see who Naruto was. He had a purpose. It was his choice. He couldn't just give up like that. His heart actually changed, but in doing so, something inside of him, as he was going against his master, and that was Danzo, Will, even though that Danzo was dead, there was an explosive inside of him. This wasn't any normal explosive, and Naruto was right there. As the explosion went off, the entire mountain ridge exploded. 
Meanwhile at Kanoha, things had escalated between Kiba and Soccer. It was just a one date and things had escalated. From the time when she came over to have him help her with the enzymes that she wanted. And Hannah was always busy. And now he was hassling her. She didn't seem to be all that in it, but he was getting her. They were stopped though as Tomo and Moshi came there. Tomo didn't know what to do as Nurki clone just poofed away. Sakura started to panic knowing that his clones wouldn't just poof away like that. Nurki had enough chakra to let them go on. So something was wrong. As she told the sector to get the medical bay ready just in case. So yeah guys, so it's basically what left off you guys can switch across the place check out for yourself. So this will be in this new episode. Sakura Haruno, please report to medical room 5 immediately. Sakura Haruno, please report to medical room 5 immediately. The sound of the loudspeakers went off as Sakura stopped. She was almost at the door. She had just received a report from Moshe. The nerd clone had just pooped away like that. She knew that something was wrong. Moshi was beside her as she was holding on Tomo's arm. When suddenly the door in front of her swing opened, she was called in when they had a patient that they couldn't handle. As she saw a burned victim, the hair was burned off the scalp. He was burned so badly and shrapnels were in his chest and over his arms and his legs. But yet to uh, some unbelievable shock, his chest was still going up and down as Sakura focused towards his cheeks. There were groove lines in his cheeks, and if his cheeks wasn't so badly burned, they would have been whisker marks. Naruto, Sakura said in fear. She quickly snapped into her doctor mode. I need you to get me all of the Uzumaki medical record. She ordered to the nurse immediately. Moshe heard the name Uzumaki as she turned towards the person lying on the stretcher. Uzumaki? Naruto Uzumaki? As she fainted as Tomo arm jerked down. Moshe, he's still alive, said Tomu. He refused to believe anything else. He came back like he promised. He's still alive, and he will recover. Hey, how about we clear it and give them some room to work? It's gonna get really hectic around here, said Kiba as he picked up Moshe. No, we're not going anywhere. I'm family, and I'm not gonna let another one die. Without me, said Tomu. Kiba nodded. You don't have to leave, but we still have to get out of the way. As he guided Tomu towards the waiting area, Tomu sat in one of the large chairs. He hated the hospital. People die here. Time skip. Sakura had just finished setting up the IV and the medical fluids when Sinade burst through the door in her medical outfit on as she was followed by Shizune. What's the situation? Sinade asked. Without hesitation, she started cleaning the burn so that she could remove the dead tissue. He's not healing like he's supposed to, said Sakura as she compared the medical reports and it will be the death of him. Sinade did not look up. What are his chances? She asked. A normal person should have died in such an explosion, but the small amount of chocolate that is healing him is prolonging his death. His healing is the only thing that can save him, and if we can't figure out what is stunting it, then he will. Soccer couldn't finish her sentence. How long do we have? An hour, said Soccer. Alright, said Snaddy. As she pulled out a whiteboard. Number one, Demon Fox being a bitch. Number two, they had to come up with reasons. It could be something crippling his chakra, Shizune said. Perhaps his chakra network is. Sakura immediately checked the theory with her medical ninjutsu. But his chakra network is all in points. Negative, she said. Or some sort of poison, said Shizune. It could be C and poison from the fire. I gave him the antidote as soon as he came in, said Sakura. Or some other poison, said Shizune. Negative, said Snaddy. I had his squad leader report to me. On my way here, he didn't mention anything about poison in the report. We can do a blood test, but the results would take too long to retrieve. How was he transported here, Shizune asked. Perhaps his body came in contact with a substance while his body was weakened. A mist ninja had an albatross, something in contract that rushed him here. If he was flying, then the oxygen could have had an effect on his... Chakra? No, I don't think so, said Sakura. As ever beat from the heart monitor took a bit longer than everyone before. I'll take the blood sample, said Sakura, in case it's work. We need to remove the shrapnel without damaging him any further. Snaddy didn't argue as she quickly, carefully removed the shrapnels. As Sakura took the blood sample, as she was making her way out, she was almost knocked over by the elders. Snaddy, her mirror call. We have to extract the nine tails now. He still has time. The cry of a baby then filled the room. Where the hell did that baby come from? Snaddy demanded. You assured us if a moment like this ever came, you would put the village first. We have to extract the nine tails right now. 
as the baby cry went on. Snelly couldn't focus on the elders and Ruth at the same time. Get out, she yelled. No, we have to make sure you do your job of protecting this village. On the way, Sucker handed over the blood sample as the assistant ran down towards the lab team. But if you do that, Naruto will die. Snelly clenched her fists. Ten minutes. We have ten minutes left. And if we know Sakura shouted, how can you even consider this? He sacrificed his life time and time again for this village. We need a better candidate than a baby that you picked from the nursery, said Snelly. We told you to have a list of candidates available, but you never did, Homura said. How do you even know the cave will escape if Naruto dies, Sakura said. Why do you think before Mito-sama passed away? She placed it inside of Kushina. If Naruto dies here, the demon fox will be released on the village. Do you want that idiot girl? There is no one in the village with enough chakra to contain. The beast like a Uzumaki. It won't be contained for too long. The other villages may do without a Uzumaki the elders challenge. So we should sacrifice children after another until we get it right. Then we should transport Uzumaki out of the village until he dies. And what Sakura said? Dump him on the enemy village like a bomb? Koharu shrugged. Might as well take advantage of this situation. As the baby cried over the screaming, as the heartbeat monitor seemed to have gotten louder, Homura and I have received the documents on how Mito pass the demon onto Kushina. We will begin join the ceiling. You will do no such thing, said Snelly. He will live, even though he was dying right under our hands. You are fooling yourself, Okagi. That boy is as good as dead. We have to look to save in the village now. As Homura started drawing the floor, the doctors were too busy saving a life to stop him. Dark lines marked the floor. When Homura was finished, we have to draw the rest of the seals on his stomach. I am not letting you get anywhere near him, said Snelly. Okagi, it is your duty. The village come first. One of the lab assistants rushed in the room. The entire lab team came together and we found. Uncovered. Toxic in the system. The lab assistant handed the paper to Sakura as Sakura scanned with sweat on her forehead. These substances are more commonly used in the poison of three ninjas. He was in the hidden ring a month ago, said Snelly. Since the demon chakra constantly healing, the poison never got a chance to get thick. And it was in his system this entire time. He probably never even knows that Shizune. What was he doing in the rain village? He's supposed to remain in this village, Koharu said. Can you make an antidote? asked Nelly. All eyes were on Sakura. To make an antidote for the poison that she was unfamiliar with in less than 5 minutes. They need the miracle right now. Time skip. I have it. As Sakura exceeded the 5 minutes, she hoped that Naruto was somehow still alive. She arrived as the walls were cracked. Steam was filling the room. The monitors were turned over. Naruto body was untouched right in the center of the room. Hurry, said Snelly, we don't have much time. Sakura rushed past the elders and released the antidote in Naruto bloodstream. They all waited, holding their breaths, waiting for the wounds to heal, waiting for Naruto to open his eyes and say everything was going to be alright, but nothing happened. Maybe it takes some time, said Sakura. Maybe it's too late, Koharu said. All your options are spent. We have to, said Koharu. Snelly felt her age as she watched as the seconds ticked down one after another and they only had they only had one choice Extract the fox No Sakura said However Shizune held her back gently as Koharu moved as he started to write a seal on the boy's blackened stomach but then the monitor on the floor stopped and a single note sound through the entire room Meanwhile Naruto sat in his mindscape against the sore wall. Blood drenched his pants as he sat against the wall. How ironic it was that his inner mindscape would replicate one of the most traumatic moments of his life. He had to have been at least 4 years old when the villagers got the bright idea to throw him into the sores. It took weeks to find his way out, weeks in the darkness, the stench, and his own cries. He had forgotten all about it, he had forced a memory into the back of his mind. But as he sat there in the darkness around him, and the stench of death was coming closer and closer. He finally remembered. He leaned his head back and closed his eyes. But as he tried to rest, he was interrupted by the noise. It looked pretty pointless to me, said Naruto. As the fox was banging against the cage, every time he tried to get too close to bars glow with purple chakra. The fox snapped. What is wrong with you, fool? You are dying. Yeah, I am, said Naruto. If you let me out, I can save you. I'll save the both of us. I'm not that stupid, said Naruto. The fox roared and tried crashing against the bars once again. 
I get it now, Senorita. You've been screwing my head so much because you know, whenever it came to this point, you won't be able to flee. Your only way out is for me to make a mistake. As Naruto wonder if people truly knew what happened when Jinjoki died. After all, they were so greedy about their power, they wouldn't let it happen. Dying isn't so bad, said Naruto. It's about time that you tried it for yourself. What about your precious village? What will happen if you were to die? The fox growled out angrily. As long as I can take you with me. It's good enough, said Naruto with a smile. It's good enough. As he felt his eyes drooping, and they closed. Slowly, Naruto opened his eyes. As he was looking up at a white ceiling, he knew the scene very well, the hospital, but yet he's never been in so much pain before. He felt something as he looked down, as Tomo was sleeping at the edge of his bed. The nurse that Naruto did not see jumped as she saw him move. You're already awake, she said, in disbelief. As she hurried out of the room. In mere moments Sakura arrived in tears that woke up Tomo from the bed and he too joined. What happened said Naruto. If he wasn't hospitalized she would have hit him over the head. You were dead for about 4 minutes and 52 seconds she said. Wow I feel like I just died he said. That's not funny she said. Tears in her eyes going down her cheeks. The window was open as the breeze rushed in. Am I? Your hair follicles were burned in the fire. Yes, you're bald. And you have no eyebrows, said Tomo, wiping away his tears. He wished he could see himself, but he could see in their eyes. It pained them. He scanned the room as he was a bit overwhelmed by all the flowers. Why are there so much flowers, he said. Most of them are from Eno, the rest are well wishes from the villagers. When they heard that you were in the hospital, said Sakura, as she wiped away the tears. As she checked his vitals, not to mention the oxygen. Is good for your recovery. Wow, said Naruto as he breathed in. Sakura smirk, yep. You're the most popular patient in hospital, she said. We're still getting gifts from places even outside from Land of Fire. And you have some really weird friends, said Tomu. There was this one guy that came in here. And keep on shouting about Yuta Flames. He was wearing all green. And he kept on yelling at you that you will rise. And I keep on telling him to shut up, but he still kept on yelling. Well, he was here, said Naruto. Almost all of the Konoha 11 came by when they had time to visit. Even the Kazakage made a personal visit. Konoha tried to put a lid on the hospitalization of you. But the rumor spread too fast, she said. We're not in danger, are we? said Naruto. All you need to do right now is rest and not worry about a thing, she said. She didn't want him to worry. Konoha was vulnerable, she wasn't going to tell him that, and the Konoha 11 had to be there in the vulnerable times just by being a container of the fox. And not to mention his other achievements, she had been reminded how important Naruto was. And look at this, said Tomo as he put a CD in front of Naruto's face. It's a signed copy of Kill Bee's first album. It's illegal to even carry in the land of fire. I can't believe you know him. As Naruto chuckled, just doing that hurt his chest. I didn't realize people actually listened to him. Well, he's only the most controversial rapper in the world, said Tomo. And you also got this, said Sakura as she lifted the winter coat. It was orange. With black trimmings going down. That's pretty awesome, said Naruto. I need the winter coat. The word girl with eyes like Kimmy got it for you. But she's not actually blind. Hinata? But I thought she was still angry at me, said Naruto. Sucker bit her lip as she wondered who could possibly stay mad at Naruto after his near brush against death. Hinata is polite, even if she's mad at you. Sucker then revealed the best part, Naruto. The bags and bags of ramen. Tomo and her laugh when they saw Naruto's eyes bulk. Snadi entered the hostel room as she heard the laughter. It was a drastic change from when the visitors came to see him earlier when he was unresponsive. I see that you're awake and moving before anyone even think that you'll get up. Just as usual, she said. Hey granny, said Naruto as he smiled. Is she really your grandma? Doesn't she have to be old? Watch it, kid, said Snadi, or I will revoke your visiting privilege. She pulled up a chair and sat beside Naruto. I'm sure you have quite a few questions. Just one. When can I go home, said Naruto. Naruto, said Snadi. I had to come up with a cover story. As far as anyone knows, you start the fire in your house while trying to cook something. And people believe that, said Naruto. I'd believe it, said Tomo. It's not important if people believe it or not. There isn't any evidence 
that the elders can bring in front of a council. I'm sure they suspected, but no one needs to know that you are in a highly classified mission. Tomo crossed his arms angrily. She burned our house. What? You you did what, Senruto? To go with the story, I burned your house, it's Nelly. You still have all of your stuff. You've just been moved. But I liked it there, Senruto. I thought you wanted to move anyway, said Nelly. That's what you told me. And he's closer to Ichirakus. He sighed. Fine, he said. And you're not leaving the hospital until your burns heal. How long would that take, said Naruto? When Sakura or I sanctioned it, she said. And I mean it. I would like to talk to Naruto in private, said Snetty. As Sakura face fell grim. I'm not going anywhere, said Tomo. It's okay, said Naruto. Tomo frowned but reluctantly. He followed Sakura out of the room. Snetty looked at Naruto. There wasn't even a piece of hair in his head. His bright blue eyes stood out. Are you aware that you were poisoned in the rain country? As he tried to raise the eyebrow but there was none to raise. But his face crunched up. I had no idea. I did. Things did feel weird he said. When anything feel like that, you have to come to the hospital immediately. It was like a ticking time bomb and prevented us from treating you properly. The demon fox chakra was so busy. Working on the poison. It didn't attend to your burns. If it wasn't for your miraculous ability to heal. You'd have been a lost cause. No other ninja would have survived, she said. While I was dying, said Naruto, I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the Kyube. And I don't think that my death is gonna free him. He's gonna die with me. Or at least be dead as a tail beast can be. An awkward silence filled the room. Snelly felt ashamed. I don't blame you for any decisions that you had to make, said Naruto. But the fox wanted you to transfer him to someone else. To someone that he can easily escape from. He could have told me about the poison but he did not. He wanted me to get killed. He was making a gamble. Are you sure? Said Snelly. When you died, nothing happened. We didn't know what to think. I'm sure, said Naruto. I'm not gonna let him escape. Snelly released a sigh. Do you remember when I talked to you about the negative effects of the Kyubi Chakra, she said, as she pulled out his medical file. In order to survive the stages of the Kyubi transformation, the Demon Fox Chakra constantly regenerate and destroy the cell. This also applied to near-death situations. Every time you come close to death like you did a few days ago and your rapid regeneration kicked in. You're close to reaching your limit, she said. Granny, said Naruto, I don't understand all that medical stuff and you're just beating her in the bush. Tell me straight, he said. You're dying. As Nelly continued, you're reaching your limit. After pain, then the war, and then the sound. Your cell counts have dropped drastically. Another drop like that could lead to drastic issues like irreversible tissue damage. Right now it will be slow and you're still looking at plenty of years in front of you. But I wouldn't be surprised if you start to feel the effects. I see, said Naruto as he closed his eyes. But Naruto another. Life in this situation and that's it. Another drastic drop in your cell count like you experienced recently. And it will have very dangerous consequences on you. And even if you survive your body will be damaged to the point where I have to force you from active duty. You got to stop running, head first into danger, because in the reality Naruto, you're not invincible. Does anyone else know, said Naruto. Sakura does, since technically, she's your personal doctor. Perhaps she can create some medicine that will minimize the effect. No, said Naruto. I'd rather she spend her time creating something that will benefit everyone else instead of just me. Snelly sigh. Naruto. If you need any help, don't be afraid to ask, she said. I'll be fine, he says he gave her a weak smile. I just want to go home. Time skip. Eventually, Naruto here grew back. His skin recovered. And the wounds closed like they were never there. But some things never heal. When Naruto closed the cabinet, his face was reflected. On the mirror surface, blonde hair fell down to his shoulder. And framed his mature face. A dark discoloration crept up from his neck up to his face a bit. From where? The burns had been intense, discoloration on his arms, when his skin had touched a boy's skin as he had wrapped him in a hug. After surviving a near death experience and a few lifetime scars, those were nothing. But as he remember the boy that he could not save, the boy that he could have easily become if his life hadn't turned out the way it did. As he stepped out of the bathroom, he always seemed a bit disoriented, knowing that this was not the place that he knew for most of his life. It's almost ready, Aim shouted excitedly as she looked over.
Tomo's shoulder as she was on her tiptoes. Ichigo ran around the table with his thumb in his mouth and placed all the utensils on the plate setting. I can't wait, said Naruto. As both Aim and Tomo carry the large bowl of ramen and placed it in the center, all four of them gripped the chopsticks in their hands. Before they could dig in though, the doorbell rang. Wait, hold on, said Naruto. He almost threw the door off his hinges to open it. Sakura looked up as Naruto forced the door open. She has been checking up on his progress. She finally found time to check up on him. With the Hokage insistence. She was also here to make sure that he was okay. Before he returned back to active duty. Just in time for dinner, said Naruto. As he pulled Sakura inside. He picked up Ichigo with one arm. And set Sakura down there. As he placed the boy in his lap. Alright, said Naruto. As chopsticks were raised in the air. Ready? Set? Sakura leaned back. Thanks for the food. They all said as she watched. It was like a race. Slurp and brought spray there for her. Don't you want some? Said Naruto with his mouth full. That's fine. I just ate, she said. She watched as the thing was emptied in seconds. It was finished. Alright, said Naruto. It's bedtime. Bedtime story? Said Aim. If you hurry and get your pajamas on, said Naruto. Aim grabbed Ichigo's hands as he rushed towards the bedroom. Naruto, whose children are those? Sakura asked. They're mine, said Naruto. As Tomo picked up the bowls and brought them towards the sink. Naruto, those aren't your children, Sakura said in confusion. No, said Naruto. But I might have stolen them from the orphanage. Naruto, you can't just take them, said Sakura. I don't see why not, said Naruto. But what if something happens to you again? Have you thought about how that will affect them? I guess they go back to the orphanage, said Naruto. But at least they go back knowing that someone loved them. Naruto, you're only 19 years old. He simply shrugged. Life's too short, he said. Sakura got worried. Are you okay? Are you feeling well? I'm fine, Sakura, he said. I've never felt more alive. I don't understand why you're doing this. What exactly happened on that mission? Ready, Aim said. She yelled. As Naruto gave Sakura a wink. I got lost in the path of life, he said. As Naruto walked in and threw himself right in bed, he landed between Aim and Ichigo. Alright, Naruto said, as he had a book in his hand. This is the tale of the utterly gutsy shinobi, and no matter what, in the face of triumph, failures, and mistakes, he never ever gave up. Time skip, Naruto tossed dirty clothes in the air. As he goes through the pile, you place it on the ceiling shelf. Naruto bombed his head. As he turned, I was trying not to wake you, as Aim. Aim was sitting up in her bed. As Naruto reached up and pulled on the katana, as he strapped it on. I don't want to go to Sue, she said, as she sailed down towards the ground. Everyone will look at me weird. But little kids are supposed to go to school, he said. Why, she asked. I don't know. They just do. As Aim pouted, as she ran her chubby fingers over the mass. Kids are mean, said Naruto. When I was little, they laughed at me, taunted me, even beat me up. But never, don't you ever... Make them feel like you deserve any less. And what some stupid little kids have to say mean nothing. As long as I'm around, I will always love you. She fell into his flap jacket with a sob. I'm glad that you wanted to be my dad, she said. Naruto beamed with pride even brighter than when he defeated Pain or Madara. One word from her made his crazy insane world look so much sensible. Besides, said Naruto with a smile on his face. There's nothing wrong with word. As he flared his choker. His eyes changed from blue to red. She giggled. You look like a kitty cat. I am a demon of mass destruction, Grandma said. As Naruto laughed as he scooped her in his arms. As he tucked her back into bed. I guess the big bad demon is losing his touch. Look how you be growing annoyance. These rodents are making you soft. Go kill something. Aim pouted that she gave Naruto his mask. You be careful, okay? I promise, I'll be careful, he said. As he left that clone to replace himself in the bed. I love you, Daddy, said Aim. I love you too, said Naruto as he placed on his mask. After several months, he was finally ready to get back to active duty. Time skip. Naruto had no idea what was going on when Tiger told him that he wanted to teach him something different. And they had to go through several security posts underground. Finally, they came upon a waterfall. Trees were around. Soft blue rocks. He guessed they were somewhere underneath the Hokage's monument. Where are we? One of Kanoha most prized possessions and most lucrative business venture, said Tiger. As Naruto reached out to touch a bark that was filled with stored energy, Tiger whacked him over the head 
They are chakra trees created by the esteemed Senju Hoshirama and they were the only ones of their kinds in this world. These trees were the primary purpose for the first Nobu War. X-Class Information Naruto nodded. He has learned a lot of things from Tiger that he wasn't supposed to know. The only secrets Tiger seemed to care about was his own. So, they're dangerous. No, just extremely useful. Are you aware of chakra paper? Yeah, I used to learn that I was a win Vinte. To prepare for the Akaskis and Naruto. Tiger Shrug The infamous organization name bounced off of him like it wasn't even important. Chakra papers are made from these trees. Because there are such limited supplies, chakra papers are extremely rare and expensive. So what are we doing down here, said Naruto. As an Anvil agent, it's about time for you to learn two elements. Which one do you wish to study? asked Tiger. Naruto blinked in surprise. This was more awesome than he thought it was going to be. As Naruto could imagine flames spewing from his mouth, a massive water dragon, a massive earth wall. But he was curious. I don't know. Which one do you know? I would have to kill you first, said Tiger. Right, said Naruto. Always secret to be thought. Since elemental chakra is genetic, the traits are usually from your other parents. But I don't exactly know my parents, Elemental Finte, and I can't exactly ask them, they're dead. Which is why I requested the information of the Hokage. Your father, Afinti, was wind, and your mother's was water. So I should learn water, Senuto. It would be slightly easier, but it's your choice. As Naruto thought about it, alright, he said. Water element it is. Tiger pointed towards the closest tree, ghosted underneath it. As Naruto went over, when he made contact, it was very cool. His chakra started draining though. Hey, what am I supposed to do? The tree reacted elements, since wind is your main affinity. It will drain that first. Is this how other ninjas usually obtain another element, said Naruto? No, most ninjas put in years of work. Other, more wealthy ninjas drink the sap from the tree to drain their elemental chakra natures to speed up the process. But since you have a large amount of chakra reserves and we have limited storage of saps, this is more logical. Even so, he felt like it was going to take a while. When you can no longer complete a winjutsu, leave the tree and start to focus on the water. Tune your chakra into it. How am I supposed to do that, said Naruto? Tiger shrug. As he points towards the lake, try drowning. Wait, does it actually work, said Naruto? I got struck with lightning 15 times until I got attuned to it, said Tiger as he turned to walk away. Under the Hokage permission, you're the only one. I load down here. If you see anyone else, kill them, said Tiger. That cross the fire element off Naruto less. Being burned alive was, well, one time was too much. Time skip. Wake up. Time for school, Naruto shouted. Aim grumble as she tuck the covers over her head. Ichigo did not move at all. As Naruto pulled the covers away, that's not fear, Aim said. As Ichigo did not move, as Naruto reached to grab her, she placed her hands together and Naruto found himself grabbing a block of wood. As she was under the bed. I didn't know that you could do that, he said. As Aim grumbled, as he dragged her from under the bed. As she got to her feet, she fell asleep. As he got the uniform that he had bought, as he pulled off her pajamas, as she yawned deeply. Meanwhile, a clone was struggling with a kicking and screaming, Ichigo, can we switch the clone axe? Done, said Naruto, as he was finished. As he carried him away, the clone grumbled as he turned back to Ichigo, who was looking at him with a feral look. Going downstairs, another clone was there that placed breakfast down on the table. As Aim was dropped in the chair, as she just sat there, before she grumbled and started to eat, the clone then came down with Ichigo, as he placed him down in his chair. Tomo exit his room. As he saw the Naruto clones running around, he turned back into his room and locked the door. Alright, said Naruto, what's your name? Aim Namikaze. Right, and if a teacher asks who your parents are, I was recently adopted by Araya Namikaze. She punched a clone in its arm and took away the hair brush that it was trying to attack her head with as she started to brush her own hair. Why do you pick such a funny name? She asked. It's the only one I can remember, said Naruto. As he attempted to defeat Ichigo Oatmeal, it's like Aruk and Jaru combined. But wouldn't that be Jaru? Asked Aim. D d just eat your food, said Naruto. As Aim Giga. When she was finished with breakfast, she placed her bowl in the sink. Naruto, can I bring an extra snack? She asked. 
But you already have one, said Naruto. And that would hurt your tummy. Can I bring a snack please, she asked as she turned towards the other clone. But didn't the other Naruto say no? It would be our little secret, she whispered. Okay, fine. As she added a rice cake in her clumsily made bento box. Let's go. One of the Naruto's grabbed Ichigo over his shoulder and brought Aim outside. He looked towards the clock. We're almost late. Oh, well, I guess I don't have to go, said Aim as she turned back. As Naruto picked her up, hold on, he said. All she saw was a flash, and the next thing she knew, she was in front of the elementary academy school as the wind was just trying to catch up. Let's do that again, she said. Tomorrow, said Naruto. As he placed her down, as other parents were also dropping their kids off, it was weird. He suddenly felt kind of normal. Ready? No, Aim said. As she looked towards the large building, she's never gone to school before and she didn't know if she wanted to. I don't know anything, she said. That's the whole point, said Naruto. You go to learn stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, I don't know. Stuff. Why? Because. You're just giving me a hard time, aren't you, said Naruto. She smiled. She gave him a hug. I'll see you later, Naruto, she said. Aim, he said, as he placed his hands in his pockets. You called me a name last night. She smirked. You're Naruto. Dad, is at work. The clone looked at her and Ichigo as they made their way off. She was able to differentiate between him and his clones. There was still so much that he didn't know about Aim and Ichigo. As Ichigo waved goodbye. As he waved goodbye. Meanwhile, Hokage's office. Hokage-sama said crow. As he appeared in the office. He looked around there was no other agents that were summoned. Only the Anvu Captain Wolf was in there. And him and Hokage. We've recently been tipped off about the whereabouts of a missing name. Sasuke, crow asked without thinking. Sasuke might be our recent missing name. But he's not the only one. Their target is Shinosu, Shio, the only ninja that was able to escape from Konoha prison, proving to be a rather difficult ninja to catch. Crew, you're to assist Captain Wolf on the mission to bring the missing ninja back alive. Yes, Hokage-sama. Crow nodded. He should have known that this wasn't about Sasuke. Hokage, I don't need some pup trailing after me, Captain Wolf said. This isn't up for discussion. You failed three times to bring Shio back. Perhaps this time some assistance will help. Wolf growled. Fine. Meet me at the gate. Crow, be careful, Snyder warned. The target has slipped through our fingers for years. No problem, I'll catch him. As he moved towards the window, until the Hokage called his name. Yeah? Snyder didn't think that she could get that image out of her mind. When the heartbeat monitor stopped, be careful, she said. As he could see the flicker of fear in her eyes. I'll be careful. I promise, he said. Time skip. Crow shivered. As he moved from tree branch to tree branch, he almost slipped on the ice. As the snow was falling, this kid really unfu. The large blue and white ninja wolf acts as he pounced from tree limb to tree limb. That's what they say, said Wolf. Chaka control was never really my strong point, said Crow. Where are we going, said Crow, as they moved deeper and deeper into the north. As the temperature was getting a lot colder. Our target is hiding out, in a Jashin temple said the wolf, as he stuffed the map in his pocket like it offended him. And how did we find that out, said Naruto? Our target, send a distress call to Konoha. Wait, 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 let me get this straight, said Naruto. The enemy sent Konoha distress signal so that we can rescue him. Yes, I'm confused, said Naruto. He probably got way over his head. Who's more inclined to rescue you? A cult. Of maniacs or the village that you betray. Who wants to capture you in a life? I guess that makes sense, said Crow. The temple that was high up in the mountains came to view. It was isolated and forgotten amongst the snowy peaks. Wolf and Crow settled as they scouted up the mountain. Now we have to figure out how to infiltrate a temple. That no one but the priest comes out alive. I can send clones in to scout the place. That will take too long. Just a second. As Crow created a hundred clones and transform them all into snakes as they slither and disappear into the cracks of the temple. Impressive, said Wolf. Crow frowned a second later. All the entrances are heavily guarded. My turn, said Wolf. As they made their way until they were close to the ancient walls. Here. Here what? asked Naruto. Earth release. Earth order. As the ground collapsed inside, creating a tunnel. Shugo. Stay and keep watch, said Wolf. The Wolf snapped his jaw and made his way back into the white forest, blending in with his white fur. 
Come on, said Wolf. When they hit the wall of a temple, Wolf punched right through it as he went upwards. It was warm inside as the snow fell off him and it changed in the water and drenched his uniform as he was a puddle under their feet. As Wolf took a deep breath, I have a scent. He's not too far from here. Crow took a sniff of the air as he gagged on the smell that he got. It left a bad taste on his tongue. It smelled like dead people. As they moved, he saw a bookshelf with jars containing body parts. This is sick, he said. As he looked at the mutilated body parts, we're here for a target, that's it. How can you ignore this? As Nurk turned the corner and his nose was right, two corpses were on some strange torture machine. Wolf found two a pair of ropes. These could help us walk around better. Crow started to breathe through his mouth as he put on the blood, stain ropes. He activated Sage Mode just in case. Let's go, Wolf said. Meanwhile, at Kanoha, as Nurka sat on the park bench, as he sent Ichigo to play, he had his thumb in his mouth as he looked towards a large, metal, construction in front of him. Ichigo went to great lengths to avoid the other toddlers moving around. As he went towards the sandbox, he sat down, quite happy at being alone and playing the sand. Oh, good morning, Naruto. He was jolted from his thoughts about Ichigo's strange behavior. As he turned towards Kurnai, who was holding her young daughter, Akai. The small toddler was wiggling as Kurnai placed her down as she attacked the jungle gym. How are you, said Kurnai, as she joined Naruto on the bench. As she was trying hard not to look at the markings that went from his neck going up to his face. She has never seen wounds healing such a way before, never in her life. I heard that you were in the hospital not too long ago. It was nothing, said Naruto. That's good, she said. She knew that that was far from truth, but he didn't want to talk about it. I often worry about your generation. So talented, but because of it. You have so much thrust upon your shoulders, she said. Even her own students were slipping from her fingers. Both Kiba and Shino was going to take the reins of their respective clans and Hinata. As she clasped her hands together nervously, Kurenai Sensei, I might need your help, said Naruto. The fact that someone need your help had her agreeing immediately. Anything. This is kind of a secret, but I've recently adopted some kids from the orphanage, said Naruto, as he pointed towards Ichigo in the sandbox. That one is mine. That was the last thing Kurenai ever expected here, especially from Naruto, as she looked towards a boy bundle in a thick jacket. Black hair and green eyes, as he had scars on his face that went down. Those are worrisome scars, said Kurnai. They're everywhere, said Naruto. His voice sounded a bit dark at that. They're all over his body, but he's a good kid, if not just a little shy. Wow, said Kurnai. She was beginning to feel old. Well, that was a good feeling for a ninja. Shikamaru was about to have a baby, and Naruto already had some. Children are a huge responsibility. Yeah, said Naruto. I also have a daughter with eyes just like yours. Kurnai looked towards him thoughtfully. I didn't know the orphanage had a Y, she said. I was hoping that you meet with her, so she knew that some others like herself exist, said Naruto. Of course, Kurnai said. When the Kayubi attacked, she paused, realizing who she was talking to. It's fine, said Naruto. When the Kayubi attacked, the Y clan was decimated, she said. My clans did things differently than the other Dojutsu clans. Not everyone in the clan was born with the red ring eyes. Those who were born with them was inducted into the main family. And those who did not, was in the branch family. Since the branch family looked normal, they sometimes integrated with civilian families. It wouldn't be a first time that a civilian family of UIs found themselves with a red eye. Newborn. I see, said Naruto, as he felt a tug on his pants. As he looked down to see Ichigo, his eyes wide in horror. As his tongue was wagging, as he had a hand full of worms. Bad ramen, he said. That's not ramen, said Naruto as he picked him up and rushed him towards the fountain to watch out his mouth. Kurna laughed a bit, who would have ever imagined Kanoha number one prankster become such an adult. They grew up so fast. Meanwhile, Crow looked down towards the triangle that was written in blood. The priest just stood there, with the other members in robes as well. The hoods were lifted from their face to reveal black skin and white markings. Our Lord Jashin, please accept our humble offering, on the priest said. The knife that he had in his hand, he pressed against his chest and brought it down. The sacrifice screamed as the other members started to slice themselves in their face, their arms, as the sacrifice received all of the wounds. We have to stop this, said Wolf. I don't know if Shio can take more of that. He searched for alternative. He didn't know if interfering with the ritual, how would it affect the target? 
He needed them to stop the ritual. As Wolf brought his hand up, Crow stopped him. What are you doing? I'm going to cause an earthquake. They will stop if they see the temple fall known on them. You can't, said Naruto. There are hundreds of people here. Who give a crap about these crazy shits? Wait, just give me five minutes. He might not have five minutes. Please, said Crow. Fine. But five minutes, that's all. Crow rushed back to the hallway and created as many clones as possible. As he sent them all out in different hallways. As he came upon cages that held a lot of people inside. The prisoners pleaded the moment they saw him. He ripped the bars right off the hinges. As he brought the people outside the temple. As he entered a classroom to see it full of children. Their eyes. Red ring. Their face looked blank. Scars on their face as they returned. Back to what they were doing. And for Lord Joshin is. Displeased with her sacrifice. The teacher paused as she noticed Crow. She wasn't given a chance to rest and smash through her body. As he scooped the children up in his arms as other clones. Went to other rooms and saw other children. And some of these people who had took their sacrifice too far. As they were lying in a pool of their own blood. With rods through their chest. Nurt didn't understand how conscious go to war with each other. When these type of evil existed. As he brought the people outside. The temple then started to shake. As it came crashing down. As Wolf came out. Good job. As he had the man over his shoulder. After the clones were gone, Crow moved his eyes as he puked. Some of the things that he saw in there, they were... It was just... He cleaned himself up and made his way. I've already sent a message back to Kanoha to get these people back to their home. Leave a few clones to stay with them until help arrive. We need to get the fugitive back to Kanoha. Crow nodded. Some of his clones talked towards the people. Some of them read and ranted. Some of them didn't speak. But some of them... I'd been through so much they couldn't even, well, realize what was going on around them anymore. Get up Shio said Wolf, as Wolf hand was glowing green towards his chest. I was hoping that they would send you to come to get me. Was this another one of your bright ideas? asked Wolf. Shio chuckled, I figure what better place I from Kanoha than in a Jashin temple. I asked for asylum but they made me a sacrifice. I never thought anything would be worse than a Kanoha prison. And that's exactly where you're going. I see you have a psychic this time. I don't plan on losing you this time, said Wolf, as he pulled out Chakra Jin ropes and wrapped his arms as Crow kneeled in front of the one of the children and asked what's wrong. But there was nothing. There is nothing that you can do to save them, said Chiyo. From what I've seen, they've been fed a mix of opium and blood from a young age so they can get addicted to killing. They're already weak and malnourished. They're not going to survive the withdrawal symptoms. You're not a minute named Sedruto. You don't know that. Huh? He's a stubborn one, said Chiyo. As he coughed, and there was blood in his palm. Let's go, said Wolf, as Crow took up the rear to watch for any sign of Shio trying to escape. So said Shio, despite being injured. How's your wife? As Wolf just grumbled. But guys, if you be interested right here, if you want to see next person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification they posted. Remember, share all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys. Go ahead and check out the brand new episode over in Anime King 3 of What If Naruto had the ultimate nature bloodline and enjoy that guys. And also I post a brand new episode over in Anime King 2 of What If Naruto Became the Avatar. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy as well guys. And remember for you to go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. But I'm over now, see you guys soon. Peace out.